As of end transmission, there are now 28 chapters in Dead by Daylight. Some of them are truly great, while others exist. In today's video, I'm going to rank each chapter that has come out as of yet. This is my Dead by Daylight 7.0.0 chapter tier list. Before I start ranking each chapter, I'm going to explain the criteria and rules I'm following when ranking them. First of all, I'm going to be looking at chapters as they currently are in the game. So for killers like Freddy and Leatherface who've had reworks, I'm only going to be considering how they currently exist. Secondly, I won't be considering maps that come with each chapter. This is because maps are free to everyone and because some chapters don't come with them. I'm also only going to be ranking chapters based on the killer power, the killer perks, and the survivor perks. One final note, I'm not ranking the perks and killer powers by how strong they are, but how well designed I think they are. For example, the perk Autodidact is generally seen as a weak or below average perk, due to its initial debuff, but I still think it's a well designed perk because it allows for some fun builds and cool moments. With all that said, I'd like to preface that this list is my opinion. There's a chance where I may rank your favourite chapter low, but that's okay. If you like a chapter that I don't, that's cool. One of the cool things about Debo Dilla is the various playstyles and killers that attract different types of players. Now that we've gone over all that, let's start with the list. Let's start off with the Last Breath chapter. This chapter comes with the Nurse and Neo Carlson. The Nurse's power is unique and fun to play, but deviates a little too much from base gameplay. It's fun to use, but if mastered it can be very frustrating to play against. It can feel like there's little counterplay. For killer perks we have 3 average perks, but they all have the niches that are alright. For survivor perks we have 3 pretty decent perks that play a part in different builds, overall good. Overall, almost a very good chapter but brought down by how oppressive the nurse can be. I'm giving the last breath chapter a C. Next, let's look at the Halloween chapter. This chapter comes with Michael Myers and Laurie Strode. Michael has a very authentic power to the movie that has unfortunately become a little dated. In my opinion, it's very fun to play against Myers. It's scary, it's atmospheric, it's fun, it's cool. You feel like you're in a Halloween movie. But it can be a little frustrating to play with how weak you can feel at times. For killer perks, we have Save the Best for Last and Play with Your Food, which are two very unique perks which both have their places in many builds. Dying Light leaves a little bit to be desired, but ultimately inoffensive. For survivor perks, Decisive Strikes helps to counter tunneling, which is nice. Object of Obsession allows a cool and unique type of gameplay that can give great value or get you killed. Soul Survivor is pretty bad, but 2 out of 3 isn't bad. Overall, an immersive power and some pretty great perks with only a few slight downsides, all of which I believe could be fixed with a few tweaks. I'm giving the Halloween chapter an A. Next let's look at Of A Flesh and Mud. This chapter comes with the Hag and Ace Visconti. The Hag's power is a power that plays very different to every other killer. But this is good, it's nice to have killers that are different. You don't want to face the same type of power every single game. It's nice to sometimes go against a chase killer then a trap killer and stuff like that. Overall it's an alright power. The killer perks in this chapter are really good. They're not too OP but they all have their place. Three hexes that are just all cool. For survivor perks, open handed is a great perk with lots of synergy. I truly believe it's underrated. Try this with bond and solo queue and you'll have a great time. Ace in the hole is also good for collecting items, but up the ante is pretty useless. Overall, it's, I'd say it's a slightly above average chapter. I'm giving a flesh and mud a B. Next let's look at a spark of madness. This chapter comes with the doctor and Feng Min. The doctor's power is just alright. There's some fun tricks you can learn with him and going against him isn't terrible but he's kind of the personification of mid. Keeping in theme with his power, his perks are just alright, nothing too special. Fortunately, this is not the case for the survivor perks. I think both lithe and alert are both very well made perks, and even technician has its place for helping less experienced survivors. This is a great set of survivor perks. Overall an average killer with average perks that is made just above average due to survivor perks. I'm giving Spark of Madness C. Next let's look at Lullaby for the Dark. This chapter comes with the Huntress, David King. The Huntress's power is fun to play as, while still having some good counterplay. While our hitboxes can definitely be a bit weird visually, they are consistent so if you learn them, they shouldn't be too big of a problem. Obviously with Ping, they can be a bit weird, but that is an issue with every killer, just with her it's a bit more obvious. For killer perks, unfortunately these are just three terrible perks. The only usable perk here is really Lullaby, and even that leaves a lot to be desired. On the contrary, for survivor perks, they're all pretty decent. Despite no mither being terrible, it does offer a fun challenge if you want survivor to be even harder. Overall, a good killer and survivor perks brought down only by how bad the killer perks are. I'm giving the lullaby for dark a B. Next, let's look at the Leatherface paragraph. While this technically isn't a chapter, I'm still going to include it because it's so similar to a regular chapter. Leatherface power has potential to be fun for both sides. Playing against him can be very tense as he's right behind you with the chainsaw. And playing as him can be really cool if you like learn the timings and go around stuff. 
but unfortunately, his ability to camp so well gives him such a bad reputation. What I believe would be an honestly pretty good killer is brought down by how strong his camping is. Hopefully the anti-camp that they're implementing later this year will help to remedy this. Along the leather face you have tree killer perks and honestly they're pretty good. Franklin's and barbecue are two good perks and they're used fairly frequently. Knockout is a slugging perk that only applies on basic hits so it's not very good in killers that benefit the most from slugging so it is a bit bad but two out of three is not bad. Overall a fun killer with a decent set of perks that is brought down by his ability to camp. I'm giving Leatherface a B. Next let's look at the Nightmare on Elm Street chapter. This chapter comes with Freddy Krueger and Quentin Smith. Freddy has a power that I find is both boring to play as and against. He's not strong, he's boring, counterplay is boring. All this is especially disappointing considering it's Freddy Krueger, he's a horror legend and his power doesn't even like line up with any Freddy Krueger thing in the films. He places dream pallets and puddles of blood which to me just doesn't really feel like Freddy Krueger at all. If it was a cool power that had cool counterplay and was fun to use I'd, it'd be more forgivable but it's not, it's just boring. And for killer perks he has two bad perks with Blood Warden being the only saving grace. For survivor perks again we have two pretty bad perks with Vigil being alright. Overall in my opinion this is the worst chapter with the only two positives being the two perks. I'd recommend just waiting for them in the shrine rather than getting this chapter. I'm giving a Nightmare on Elm Street chapter an F. Now let's look at the Saw chapter. This chapter comes with the pig and detective David Tapp. The pig's power is alright. Some cool ambush tricks you can do, but the reverse berry traps aren't exactly very fun nor unfun to use. They're just a good tool to delay the survivors. While this isn't necessarily bad, there's just nothing very interesting about it. Facing the pig is pretty good, and it's one of the few killers that can scare you if you don't pay attention, so that's cool. For killer perks, there are two bad perks that are rarely used, and make your choice. Make your choice is a fun perk that works well with certain killers. For survivor perks, we have three pretty good perks, perhaps even underrated. Overall, you have good survivor perks, bad killer perks, and an overall mid killer. Leaves her to be a bit mid tier. I'm giving the Saw chapter a C. Next, let's look at the Curtain Call chapter. This chapter comes with the Clown and Kate Denson. The Clown's power, in my opinion, has to be one of the more boring powers in Dead by Dilla. I don't find the gameplay as very intriguing, and the counterplay even less so. Despite this boring power, he does have three very good perks that have many use cases. And for survivor perks, we have three cool perks that all have their places in many builds. Overall, it's a killer that is, in my opinion, very dull that is only saved by a few perks offered in the chapter. I'm giving a curtain call a D. Next, let's look at the Shattered Bloodline. This chapter comes with the Spirit and Adam Francis. The Spirit's power is a power that I believe is very fun to use. Moving fast and correctly leaving face directly on the survivor is simply fun. The counterplay can be a little tough, but as long as the Spirit isn't using busted add-ons, I think it's never too unfair. For killer perks, we have three fun perks. Each of these perks are good fun when they go off. For survivor perks, while not strong, Pebble and Autodidact are two straight up fun perks, while Deliverance is just a good perk. Overall, we have a fun killer, fun killer perks, and fun survivor perks. The only real downside to this chapter is how oppressive some of Spirit's add-ons can be, but I don't think that's enough to bring it down for being a truly great chapter. I'm giving Shattered Bloodline an S. Next, let's look at the Darkness Among Us chapter. This chapter comes with the Legion and Jeff Johansson. The Legion is a fun killer to play, it can be satisfying just running around fast and constantly hitting survivors. It's also very nice when you manage to hit 4 survivors so you get the free down, but he can be a bit tedious to go against. Constantly having to mend isn't the most riveting gameplay. But for killer perks, we have 3 fairly decent perks. Mad Grid is funny, Iron Maiden has its place with Huntress and Trickster, and Discordance is a good info perk. For survivor perks, we have 2 fairly bad perks and 1 very good one. Distortion allows you to ignore almost all ore reading perks the killer has and is arguably even too strong. Aftercare is just overshadowed by Bond in my opinion, and Breakdown is mm, kinda just there. Overall, a fairly fun killer with some fun killer perks, but slightly lacking survivor perks as well as the survivor experience facing the killer not being the most thrilling, I'm gonna give the darkness among us chapter a C. Next, let's look at Demise of the Faithful. This chapter comes with the Plague and Jane Romero. The Plague has unique power that is a surprising level of depth. Using Red Puke is fun, and while some people dislike facing her, I think she's fairly fun and a nice switch up from the usual killers. For killer perks, Infectious Fright and Corrupt are two great perks that are used in many playstyles, and even Dark Devotion has its niches and at the very least is a cool unique perk. Survivor perks are a bit disappointing, with Solidarity and Poise being two fairly bad perks, and I don't see them used too often. But Head On is one great perk, and it may be one of my favourite perks in the whole game. If you're looking for a fun game of Survivor, just put on Head On Quick and Quiet and you're good to go. 
Overall, a pretty good killer with some pretty good killer perks and one of my most favourite survivor perks, only brought down by two bad survivor perks. I'm going to give Demise of the Faithful an A. Now let's look at the Ghostface chapter. Ghostface as a killer I really like. I find him very fun to play both as and against. Playing as him is fun because you get to sneak up on survivors and it rewards you for being stealthy. Playing against him keeps you on your toes as he could be watching you at any moment. His only real problem being that he's a little weak. For perks, I'm All Ears is a good and fun perk, but I think Trilling Tremors and Fugitive Chase are a bit lacking, with the latter being borderline useless in my opinion. Overall, a killer that has many fun aspects, but his perks that are slight let down. I'm gonna give Ghostface a B. Next, let's go over the Stranger Things chapter. A quick disclaimer before I go over it is I will be including the perks despite them being general now. This does kinda go against judging chapters currently as they are, but this is a bit of a weird situation I think deserves an exception. The Stranger Things chapter comes with the Demogorgon, Steve Harrington, and Nancy Wheeler. The Demogorgon is a simple but fun killer. You can get some cool hits with Tread and encourages you to get risky with it. The portals also allow you a bit more mobility than the average killer and offers some possible stealth moments. Facing the Demogorgon can also be pretty fun. With demo shreds from a distance you can bait them and dodge them, so there's some counterplay there. For killer perks, Jolt is pretty nice but it only works with basic attacks, so it can't be used effectively on a lot of killers. Fearmonger is actually pretty decent at countering exhaust perks. The other perk is so bad I forgot its name. For survivor perks, Nancy has three pretty good perks. Even situational awareness is great for the do x seconds of co-op actions. Steve's perks are slightly lacking, with kinship being outshadowed by reassurance and babysitter just being outshadowed by borrow time. Second win can be good though, as it has potential to give two free health states. Overall, a pretty fun killer with some pretty good perks. Some perks are overshadowed by others, but that's really its only flaws. I'm giving the Stranger Things chapter an A. Next, let's look at the Cursed Legacy chapter. This chapter comes with the Oni and Yui Kimura. The Oni's power is a lot of fun, you truly feel powerful when in rage mode, but despite this he doesn't feel unfair to go against. Oni's design is just simply great in my opinion. For killer perks, unfortunately Oni's perks are just a bit lacking. While I wouldn't call any of them terrible, not anything special and just kinda meh. Survivor perks on the other hand are all great. Each can be used in fun builds and offer a lot of fun synergies. Overall, you have a great killer and great survivor perks brought down only by how lackluster the killer perks are. If it wasn't for the killer perks, this chapter would be S, but unfortunately the killer perks just aren't that good. I'm giving a cursed legacy an A. Next, let's look at the Chains of Hate chapter. This chapter comes with the Death Slinger and Zarina Kassir. The Death Slinger is a simple but fun killer. Landing shots is satisfying, but it can take a while to down some survivors. For killer perks, they're alright but they can be used in various builds, Gearhead being not as good as the others but still not too bad. For survivor perks, For the People is a very fun perk that allows some great plays. Off the record is a nice anti-tunnel perk and Red Herring is a cool idea on paper but usually ends up being a waste of time without any value. Overall a very well rounded chapter that does little wrong but doesn't do anything too amazing. I'm giving Chains of Hate a B. Next let's look at the Silent Hill chapter. This chapter comes with Pyramid Head and Cheryl Mason. Pyramid Head's power can be used in fun ways if you go for ranged shots. Caging lets you not waste time hucking, allowing you more time to chase, which is good. Unfortunately, placing Torment can feel a little sluggish though. Facing him can be fun, I think, trying to dodge his attacks and bait him. For killer perks, I believe Trail of Torment is actually a very fun and underrated perk, but his other two perks have a little lax and luster and are a bit too situational. For survivor perks, we have three pretty decent perks. Repressed Alliance and Soul Guard are fun and unique perks that have their uses. Blood Pact is cool on paper but is held back by his obsession requirement. Overall, pretty decent killer with perks that slightly miss the mark, and survivor perks that are cool and unique. I'm giving the Silent Hill chapter a B. Next, let's look at the Descend Beyond chapter. This chapter comes with the Blight and Felix Richter. The Blight is a high skill cap killer that feels rewarding to master. Countering the Blight usually feels fair as long as you're able to find a decent tile. I do think he can be a bit too aggressive due to some of his add-ons which make him feel unfair to go against. This being his main flaw, if they were to adjust some of these add-ons I think it would be perfect. Each of the Blight's perks, while nothing too special, are pretty cool and unique. They each have something of use to offer. Unfortunately, the survivor perks are a bit lacking. In my opinion, Visionary and Desperate Measures are outclassed by Deja Vu and Botany Knowledge respectively. Built to Last is actually pretty good if you have challenges to bleed specific items, or you just like to use flashlights a lot. Overall, excluding add-ons, a fairly balanced and fun killer with some cool perks, with survivor perks that are just a bit lacking but not outright bad. I'm giving to Zen Beyond an A. Next let's look at the Binding of Kin. This chapter comes with the Twins and LED Ricardo. I actually think the Twins can be very fun to play. Running around as Victor and hitting far shots can be fun. Dodging and kicking him as a survivor is also fun. Unfortunately, they're brought down by how buggy they are, 
and how reliant on slugging they are. Slugging is very boring from a survivor perspective and makes playing against any anti-slug terrible. For killer perks we have honestly true cool perks that only falter due to them being a little bit weak in my opinion. If they simply buff the numbers in coup de gras, pression and hoarder, they could be pretty good perks, but as they are now, they're just alright. For survivor perks we have a great set of perks, deception is a very fun perk to use, power struggle is great when it's pulled off, and appraisal is good for item collecting. Overall, a killer that though I believe is fun, has some pretty significant downsides, with perks that are just alright coupled with some great survivor perks. I'm giving a binding of kin a B. Next let's look at the all kill chapter. This chapter comes with the trickster and Yun Jin Lee. The trickster can be fun to play, but it can also be very tedious I feel. If you get a map with lots of line of sights, he feels great, but if you get one with lots of clutter, he feels bad. Versing the trickster is the inverse, where sometimes he feels like there's nothing you can do to not get hit, while other times it's almost too easy to avoid him. Fortunately for killer perks we have a great set, that each have a place in many builds. Nothing really to say about them, just three good perks. For survivor perks, smash hit is fun, but the other two perks are a bit forgettable. Overall, a killer that fluctuates between being very fun to tiresome with great perks, coupled with one fun survivor perk and two forgettable ones. I'm giving all kill a C. Next, let's look at the Resident Evil chapter. This chapter comes with Nemesis, Jill Valentine, and Leona S. Kennedy. The Nemesis' power is simple, but I like it. His tentacle is dodgeable, so survivors have some agency facing him. Getting to level 2 and being able to just plow through pallets makes you feel like an unstoppable force. The zombies are also a nice touch that can lead to some funny moments. Having to infect survivors can be a bit tedious, but not too bad overall. For killer perks we have some pretty decent ones. Lethal is great because I love getting to a chase as soon as possible and Hysteria is nice with Legion. Eruption while nerfed is still alright and it's just like Jolt but works with special attacks. For survivor perks, Blast Mine and Flashbang are great perks, with the rest of Leon's and Jill's also being either alright or pretty good. Overall, a pretty fun killer with pretty good killer and survivor perks. Not much wrong with this chapter, only thing holding it back from the S tier is I don't think Nemesis' power is S tier level. I'm giving the Resident Evil chapter an A. Next, let's look at the Hellraiser chapter. This chapter comes with Pinhead. Pinhead's power is very cool and I think it fits him perfectly. Learning to land your chains is fun and it's satisfying when you manage to hunt down the boxing at multiple chain hunts in a row. I really enjoy his power to play as and even playing against it I think is fun if you have a competent team. If you don't, someone can easily throw. He can be frustrating to face when people who don't know how to counter him play against him. For killer perks, we have three great perks that all achieve what they set out to do. Overall, a very cool killer power that has cool mechanics with some great killer perks only brought down by the fact that his counterplay isn't immediately obvious and can expect a bit too much from four random solo queue. I'm giving the Hellraiser chapter an A. Next, let's look at the Portrait of a Murder chapter. This chapter comes with the artist and Jonah Vasquez. The artist's power is cool and it's fun to use if you go for range shots, but unfortunately, the best counter to her power is to just leave the loops as soon as she sets up birds, which ends up being a bit boring from both the killer's and survivor's perspective. For killer perks, Pain Res and Pentimento are two strong perks that are great for slowdown. Groomer and Base is cool conceptually, but is a bit too weak to be used in my opinion. For survivor perks, while none of these perks are bad, they're all pretty boring. Overall, a killer with an interesting power with kinda boring counterplay, with two good killer perks coupled with some boring survivor perks. I'm giving a portrait of a murder a C. Next, let's look at Sadako Rising. This chapter comes with the Onryo and Yuichi Asakawa. Sadako has a conceptually cool power. Teleporting to TVs is nice, and the ability to more survivors is really cool. She is fun to play, but I feel like she's held back by how long her TVs are turned off when you try to TP to them. This long cooldown needlessly makes her power not work a lot of the time, and makes survivors turning off TVs redundant. Enjoy her design a lot, but this fault does drag her back a lot, I feel. For killer perks, Floods and Merciless are two cool perks. Merciless being more fun for the survivor in my opinion, but still not bad. Call of Brian now is a bit mid now after the nerf, but I'll take that over the old meta. For survivor perks, we have nothing too special here. The perks aren't terrible, but they're not particularly great. Except for Parental Guidance, which I think has some great synergy with perks like Head-On and Decisive Strike. Overall, a killer with a fun power with unfortunate cooldowns, some pretty nice killer perks and an average survivor perks. I'm giving Sadaka Rising a B. Next, let's look at the Roots of Dredge chapter. This chapter comes with the Dredge and Hattie Core. The Dredge has a very cool killer design and power. The Nightfall mechanic is especially cool to face and it's fun sneaking up on survivors with it. The main downside of this power I feel is how map dependent it can be. If lockers are set up nicely, he's a ton of fun. If not, he can be a bit of a drag. For killer perks, Dissolution and Darkness Revealed have their spots in some builds, while Septic Touch is just a bit bad. For survivor perks, Residual Manifest and Overzealous are pretty good. Inner focus is a bit weird because why do you need to see other survivors' grass marks? 
To me it's kinda bad, but two out of three is not bad. Overall, a very cool killer held back only by Locker or NG, with two pretty good survivor perks and two decent killer perks. I'm giving Roots of Dread an A. Next, let's look at Resident Evil Project W. This chapter comes with Wesker, Rebecca Chambers, and Ada Wong. Wesker is simply a greatly designed killer. He's tons of fun to play, while having some fun counterplay. Flaking survivors into walls is just pure fun. My only problem is when fully infected, the hindrance allows him to tunnel easier, but that's about it. He has three pretty decent killer perks. While none of them are amazing, they all have their place for specific plays or countering certain perks. And for survivor perks, we have a good selection of perks with reassurance, wiretap, hyper focus being great. Better than new and low profile aren't too good, but still not terrible. Overall, arguably the best design killer in Dead by Daylight. Some pretty decent killer perks and a good selection of survivor perks. This is everything a chapter should strive for. I'm giving Resident Evil Project W an S. Next, let's look at the Forest in the Fog chapter. This chapter comes with the Knight and Fatoro Toscano. The Knight's power looks really cool and feels nice to use. There are times where you can use your guard to guide survivors towards you to hit them, which is nice, but most of the time the gameplay of the Knight boils down to dropping a guard and forcing a survivor to leave the loop. This ends up not being very fun to play as or against. For killer perks, you have pretty good perks. Face of Darkness is a little convoluted, but still not bad. For survivor perks, Fogwise is a really nice perk, but Quick Gambit and Potential Energy are too gimmicky to be any real use. Overall a killer that can be fairly boring to play and is almost always boring to face, some decent killer perks and one good survivor perk. While it's not the worst chapter, that's about it. I'm giving Forge in the Fog a D. Next let's look at the Tools of Torment chapter. This chapter comes with the Skull Merchant and Thalita and Nanato Halaira. I'm not a fan of the Skull Merchant's power. I feel like the only way to use your power is to set up drones by gens which just encourages tree gens. How else can you use your power? Playing her is as basic as pressing M2 by gens every once in a while and facing her is a drag. The one positive I can say is I do like the little mini games to hack drones. It's a cool alternative to skill checks. For killer perks, none of them are too interesting. While I wouldn't call them terrible, I wouldn't call them good either, just some boring perks. For survivor perks, the teamwork perks are cool conceptually but nothing special in execution. Friendly competition is outclassed by other perks, but that said, Cut Loose, Background Player and Blood Rush are some cool and interesting perks. To be honest, I think they're great. So half the perks are great while the other half are kinda bad. Overall, a very bad killer with boring perks. The only saving grace of this chapter is three pretty cool survivor perks, but are these perks enough to save it from F tier? I'm giving Tools of Torment an F. Next let's look at the end transmission chapter. This chapter comes with the Singularity and Gabriel Soma. The Singularity is a very cool killer. His power, while a bit disorienting at times, is extremely unique and is fun to try and outsmart survivors with technical pods. Playing against it is also fun as you try to predict which pod he's in and taking cover. After the 7.0.2 hotfix, I do believe his AMPs are in a nice spot, which was previously my main problem with him. For killer perks, Force Agitation is a nice snowball perk, Genetic Limits is a nice anti-exhaust perk, and Machine Learning, while hard to trigger, does give you some great benefits if you can correctly predict which gens will pop. For survivor perks, Made for This is a fairly strong perk, not just because of speed boost, but the healing endurance has got me value when I'm not even going for it. Troubleshooter is alright and Scavenger seems like more of a hindrance unless you're running strong toolboxes. Overall, a greatly designed killer that is fun to play as and against, some cool killer perks and some pretty decent survivor perks. I'm giving Entrance Mission an S. That concludes my tier list of every Dead by Daylight chapter so far. Here's what the final list looks like. If you think there are any changes you'd make, leave them down in the comments below. I'm sure what I think constitutes a good chapter is vastly different to what you think makes a good chapter, so I'd love to see the reasoning behind your lists. I'd like to thank you for making it this far and I hope you enjoyed your time. If you like this video, you may enjoy some of my other videos. Currently, only 18.5% of people who watch my videos are subscribed. If you're not subscribed and you'd like to see more videos like this, I'd ask that you do subscribe. If you'd like to see behind the scenes of my videos or get updates about upcoming videos, you can follow me on Twitter. That's all for now. Thank you and goodbye.